Species extinction is caused by too many people. Depleted fisheries caused by too many people. Starvation, too many people. In fact, overpopulation causes genocide, migration, and probably climate change. What number is not too many? My estimate, below 100 million. How did I arrive at this number? We know that rich people consume a lot. Poor people consume very little. Most of us fall somewhere in between. All of us together create a burden of, let's say, 20 footprint units. The richest 20% create 16 of these. The remaining 5.1 billion create only four units. I'm sure you know the world's population is greater than 6.4 billion. Using this number eliminates a need for a calculator, and the conclusions will be the same. The average home of the richest 20% looks like this. The poorest 80% more like this. This injustice creates social conflict. However, expectations that the 5 billion poor people will achieve the average rich well-being keeps the social conflict from exploding in our faces. What if they succeed? Then the human footprint increases from 20 to 80. 20 footprint units is already enough to exhaust and degrade Earth. 80 would do it four times faster. If a more equal distribution of the Earth's bounty is necessary to limit conflict, it must be facilitated without increasing this total human footprint. Either each person in the rich group must reassign 75% of his or her consumption to the poor, or global population must contract to a quarter its present size. To attain a more peaceful world requires lowering the population to 1.6 billion. However, even if we could attain a global population of 1.6 billion people, the sum of all these numbers, and, for example, Canada had 8 million instead of 32, England had 15 instead of 60, and China had 320 million instead of 1.3 billion, and all of these other regions had one quarter of their populations. Notice the United States had 87 million rather than 350. And each of these countries enjoyed an average North American lifestyle. This new world would not be eco-sustainable. We would still be consuming our fossil fuel and water to extinction. We would still be reducing production of renewables like fisheries. And we would still be reducing the natural recycling and absorption capacities of our ecosystem. The world's sustainable population would be smaller. How much smaller? There are many ways to calculate the world's sustainable population. Take any non-renewable supporting resource, for example oil, and ask how long it would last for different populations. Our oil would last 500 years if we had 100 million. Take any non-exhaustible resource, for example hydropower, and ask how many people will it support if other energy resources, for example fossil fuels, are not used. The answer is near 100 million. Take any renewing resource and ask how many people it can support if the usage rate does not degrade its supply. Let me provide calculations using soil as an example. Most farming activities lower both soil quality and quantity. Plowing and runoff erode soil. Crops mine the soil's minerals. Therefore, soil is lost in the farming process. All would be gone if it were not for the natural processes that generate new soil. Sustainable farming practice means the amount of soil lost equals the amount created. However, on average, today's farming techniques lose soil 16 times faster than Mother Nature makes it. That is, it would take 15 years to replace what was lost in a year of farming. On average, to be sustainable, after an acre is farmed, it would have to remain fallow for 15 years. This means we can farm only one sixteenth of our land. We can feed only one sixteenth of the 1.6 billion people. 
the peaceful population living at North American lifestyles with sustainable soil practices is 100 million people. Wait a minute, we're not finished. Even a reduction to 100 million is not sustainable. Humans strive for better well-being. For example, people prefer to live longer. An 86-year lifespan is better than an 85-year lifespan. However, an individual who lives one year longer increases his lifetime footprint by a little over 1%. Just to accommodate this one-year increase in lifespan, the population of 100 million would have to decrease to 99 million. There are thousands of lifestyle improvements that would require similar decreases in population. As long as people yearn for eco-sustainability, peace through social justice, and ever-increasing well-being, the global population will have to continue to decrease below 100 million. <laughs>